Hi there, and welcome to Insights. My name is Kathy Poggi, and on today's show, we're going to celebrate Black History Month. And here with us to help celebrate Black History are the people from the Eastville Community Historical Society of Sag Harbor, New York. And I'd like to welcome them warmly to the set of Insights, and we will begin by introducing everyone. So welcome to the show. Okay. And we'll start with Joanne Carter. I'm Joanne Carter. I am uh, a <coughs> member and a <coughs> fundraising <coughs> chairperson for the Eastville Historical Society. And Wes? My name is Wesley Howard Carrion. I am primarily geared toward raising funds in the form of the fish fry. I'm a retired probation officer from New York City. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And Marion Leonard? I'm Marion Leonard, and I've been a member of the Eastville Community uh, Historical Society for many years yeah, and yeah. very active for the last two or three years Well, I've had more time. Welcome to the show. And Jack Cook. Well, my name is really John Cook. Okay. But it's all right. You can call me that. Everybody does. Okay. I'm a retired lawyer and uh, I'm the treasurer of the organization. And when we moved out to Sag Harbor in 1980, 80, uh, I became interested in the Eastville area because uh -huh. we live near the Eastville area. And since that time, I've tried to keep hope alive. Okay. <laughs> and? I'm Marjorie Day, the president of the Eastville Community Historical Society. And um, I'm trying to do the best I can to keep the organization together with the help of all the other members. And I'm happy to be here this morning. Welcome. Welcome to the show. And tell <laughs> us, um, just tell us a little bit about how the Eastville Community Historical Society got started. Well, you know, it's a community, Eastville Avenue is a community where there were several uh, nationalities living and um, the church had been established at that time because this was in 1980 that we finally got together as friends of St. David's, did some work there, helped establish or form the church, maintenance of the church, and then we formed an organization in 1980. Mm -hmm. 81? Well, it was 80 and the charter came out in 81, as Jack will tell you about. And that's how the Eastville Community Historical Society was Organized. Okay, now I am an East Ender, not my whole life, but for the last 10 or 11 years, <clears throat> and I never knew that Eastville existed. Now it's at an avenue in Sag Harbor? It is an avenue in Sag Harbor. It's the East End of Sag Harbor. So it okay. had the Eastville, or there's a Northville here in Riverhead, I think. Yes. So it's that sort of way that it established the, uh, the direction or the name, Eastville. Okay. And uh, the friends got together to organize this uh, organization. And, and Kathy Eastville was um, made up of um, African Americans and Native Americans who worked on the whaling ships. And also, it was made up of uh, Eastern Europeans who came here to work in the industries of Sag Harbor. Okay. So it was it was a working class area <coughs> made up. And uh, in, in fact, this is how we uh, came by our. Uh, our logo. Okay. Link, our logo is linking three cultures, and those are the three cultures that were involved in it. So that's what that tie in is. Exactly. I didn't know what that mm -hmm. was. May I add this? Yes. Uh, geographically, this whole area was outside of the village limits. It was beyond, it was out in the country. Okay. And uh, that's where these people started to live and so forth and so on. Because I think Madison Street was the northern mount uh, boundary. And it's interesting that they were living out in the country then. And not quite in the village. That's right. Not <laughs> That's quite, quite in the village. Right. And um, who makes up your membership now? The membership is made up of the people who live there. Um, residents, some summer residents come and join our organization. And it's mainly the, uh, um, when you say um, members, the people who live there, the... Uh, uh -huh. <clears throat> That's all. Our membership is made up really of people all over San oh, Harbor oh, who are just interested in in uh, in this particular kind of history, in this part of the history of San Harbor. Many people are interested in history or are scholars, uh, and they just have an interest in historic preservation, and they they join our organization. They have that interest. We and have I about 139 members, as mm -hmm. I understand. It's marvelous. Yeah, it's really and it's growing. 
And your historian is not with us today. No, no Kathy no. Topton wasn't able to be with us, but she's done a lot of the research, and that's where we're getting a lot of our material. She is frustrated because there are so many other uh, events that she's invo involved in, but she wants to spend time doing her research, mm -hmm. and she has so much to give. Uh, uh, the book, uh, the American Beauty Rose by Dorothy Sarkowski, has some history, but there's much more to be dug out of the libraries and uh, the various, uh, we do oral history, and we get a lot of information from the oral history of the residents who have lived there, descendants of these relatives are able to tell us what's been happening at that time and how the, the Eastville came together. And, and Jack, why don't you give us a little bit of that history, could you? Well, about the... Uh beginning of this organization, uh, we met in September of 1980, and we called ourselves the Friends of St. David AME Zion Church. And out of that meeting, as the Friends of the AME Zion Church, incidentally, AME Zion is African Methodist Episcopal Zion. Thank That's you important. very much. <laughs> African Methodist Episcopal <laughs> Zion. Uh, church and we decided on that meeting and I was there to obtain a formal recognition of the church that we met in the Amy Zion church that's there was built in 1840 it's been there since that time it's been used since that time to obtain formal recognition of that church to get it on the National Register of Historical Places number two to get a formal recognition of the name, uh, to get tax exemption. I'm a lawyer. And I, I was just going to say, it's great to have a council on your you side. You got to have a charter for the state and all right. that and get tax exemption. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Well, could you put a little few words about the background of the church and how it got to be there? Okay. Right, very good. In 1840. Thank you, sir. You and the party. There were three, four people, three African Americans, uh, Louis Cuffey, William Pierce, and a David Pierce, David Hempstead, I'm sorry, and one Native American, Charles Plato, got together to form a building committee to build a church on East Hill Avenue. Okay. Um, it's still there, that became the St. David Amy Vine Church subsequently. And interesting, it's interesting that uh, Plato, Charles Plato, the Native American, had been a member of the Presbyterian Church. And then oh. at that time, we had a roster called people of color. And he was on it, and he joined with these three other gentlemen to uh, form the St. David's Amy Zion Church. And David Hempstead was an African American. As a matter of fact, it's interesting that there's a street named after him. And oh. he was a well-known guy, sort of well in both the white and the black communities. And that street is named after him. And it's, there's also a cemetery on the same street in which the former members of the church and pastors mm -hmm. and World War II veterans and the whalers and all that, right. because an awful lot of uh, blacks became whalers. They were sent to sea. We understand that uh, there was some, that Sag Harbor was a part stop on the Underground Railroad. Well, I read that somewhere. And, and they I was would come there and you'd go to sea for two or three years and get lost. So that's part of it. Jack, I'd like to, uh, wanna... local history has it that there's a place under the altar where uh, they actually hid the slaves and that trap door is, is there. Now, whether that's accurate or not, we're not quite sure, but. Mm -hmm. That's the myth. <laughs> That's the myth. And yes. These slaves are waiting to go east to no, Massachusetts. They, no, or? north. Actually, to Canada, to Canada. eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, they did stop in Massachusetts, many of them. But uh, at that time, slaves literally had to leave the country in order to become free. Because there was slavery, many of people don't know, but there was slavery even in New York State up until 1827. Mm -hmm. And if and when we get the Sears house, which will come in later, all these facts and the results from Kathy Tucker's research, you can come down and we look forward to you coming down to visiting our place. 
once is established. But Jack, Can you elaborate on that, please? But I do oh, want to say mm -hmm. that one of the other Native Americans involved in the church was a Mr. Pharaoh, mm -hmm. and I think he, he should be mentioned yes. also. That's Mr. true. Mr. Pharaoh, he lives, the Pharaohs that still live in, um, in Sag Harbor. And uh, he was just part of the Presbyterian church, left the church, or part of the community, and they formed this um, church because there wasn't room for them at the other churches. And so, um, with that in mind, and now that you've, you're trying to preserve the history and to illuminate people, and I'm feeling very dim about this <laughs> myself, I don't know a lot about it, um, it, what is the mission actually of your society now? Is it to educate and... Disseminate. Disseminate <laughs> information, <laughs> educate uh, the community, and the whole of the East End about what we're doing, to reveal some of the history of the Native Americans, the uh, and the free men who lived there. They were Africans who were free men who lived there. At in that time. In that yes. time, yes. They were free men. So in history at that time, there were not many free men then. Not many. No. But in Sag Harbor... There were. So this is wonderful. Yes. A and lot of people, how did that happen? How did that come to be? Uh, well, some of them were craftsmen who actually either bought their freedom or came <laughs> to the United States early on before slavery uh, as free people. So they were never in fact slaves. Uh, a lot of people are unaware that many Africans arrived on the American shores free when they came. They remained that way and helped others along the Underground Railroad. In fact, the first pastor, if I recall, isn't that right? John yes. Thompson. John Thompson, who was the first pastor of St. David AME Zion Church, later became a very well known abolitionist. Yeah, she worked with Frederick okay. Douglass, right, as I understand. And, and for people who don't know who Frederick Douglass he was. He was a leading abolitionist and he <laughs> became a very heavy guy in terms of uh, uh, the work he did in trying to get the uh, slaves uh, freed and agitated and agitated, and he became probably the, what we call now a civil rights leader today. Okay. I mean, at a time was an itinerant minister also who traveled up and down the coast. Mm -hmm. And it was thought in one of the books that he stopped in Sag Harbor. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now tell us, there's something happening on the 15th that I'd like to brush on uh, just quickly. Um, I think it's happening in Connecticut. Does somebody know about... Uh, Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, the, um, the American uh, affiliates have uh, established the fact that they want to bring to the forefront the history of Sinke, an African who was brought from uh, Africa with several other Africans on a ship called the um, Amistad. The Amistad. Amistad. Yes. They mutinied on the ship. And um, they were hoping that the sailors, the Cuban sailors, because of the Spanish-Cuban mm -hmm. gold, would take them back to uh, Africa. That didn't happen. So they were stalled outside of Culloden Point, which is right out of Montauk. Montauk. Uh -huh. Right. And there they stayed for, for quite a while. They, um, at the time, there was a Mr. Green who um, went out, wanted to go out to talk to them, or uh -huh. they came in to talk to him, to make some kind of arrangements about selling or wares. And uh, it didn't work out, but he was, from, Mr. Green was from Sag Harbor. He had a house in Sag Harbor, and I hope we can see that house sometime because they're talking about it. Anyway, the U.S. Coast Guard went out to the ship, commandeered it, and took it back to Connecticut. Want to pick up on that? Um, no, you do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just might want to add to it. Consequently, there was a trial okay. in, uh, in Connecticut mm -hmm. where they were tried, and um, the difficulty was, yes. But the trial. Right. Because I've read about the yeah, mission. Yeah. John Quincy Adams, the former president of the United States, was there came out of retirement and represented Singh K when they were trying is to. Is that right? That is right. Mm -hmm. He That's came right. out. This is He hadn't practiced law in many, many years, right? A former president of the United States came to, to represent Singh To represent Sinke, Sinke. Right. And he won the case. Yeah. It was <laughs> Isn't that something? I think we should let people know that it was difficult at first because this was a tribe of Mendes from Sierra Leone, and uh, it, was, it was difficult for them to speak English. Uh, someone involved with the case went to New York City, went up and down the docks trying to find, say, oh, he learned how to uh, count in Mendy. Okay. And he, he went up and down the dock talking or counting. Someone heard the language, came to him, and he was used as a translator for the trial, which was a uh, yes. very great thing for the, for the uh, 
for the He's on for Sankey. That's right. And that's right. Okay. This gentleman who was the translator, by the way, was a black American. He was a black. He was a black American. Yes. And we're going to take a break in just a second. And when we come back, we're going to learn more about this Sag Harbor Society. And um, it's rich with, with history that many people just don't know about. Please join us in just a moment. In America, you are not required to offer food to the hungry or shelter to the homeless. There is no ordinance forcing you to visit the lonely. In fact, nowhere in the Constitution does it say you have to provide anything for anybody. Thank you for all you've given. Imagine what more could do. Hi, and welcome back to Insights. We're celebrating Black History Month. I'm learning so much. This is a wonderful show. Again, I'd like to uh, welcome our guests from the Eastville Community Historical Society of Sag Harbor. I bet lots of you didn't know that there was such a society. Um, welcome again. Thank you. Well, Thank good you. to be here. And I'd like to direct my next question to Marion. And I'd like you just to give us some idea of um, what are some of the programs which promote the mission, which educate ongoing people? Uh, well, actually, the East Phil Historical Community Historical Society has been a great asset to Sag Harbor because uh, They've had annual fish fries, which everybody loves to come to. They've given some great concerts that uh, are fundraisers, basically, but they brought Pete Seeger to Sag Harbor, mm -hmm. which is, of course, a great advantage for our community. They have um, I've always been a very important part of the, the uh, Sag Harbor, well, historical fest, whatever they have every oh, fall. The and the Eastful community has opened up their community. They've had things going on at St. David's, storytelling, food tasting. Um, High representatives of the Shinnecock Reservation. Right. Like all to um, promote awareness. All to promote awareness. <laughs> and wonderful <laughs> stories of, of early um, African Americans, Native Americans, whatever. Um, they've also given tours of their community. And Kathy does a wonderful job of taking people <laughs> around showing them the historical sites. And those, those are very popular. Mm -hmm. And uh, people from all over come and take part in this. If um, I could just interrupt you for one moment. You, you, we mentioned something about Shinnecock. And is there a relationship between the early whalers or free African Americans in Sag Harbor and the Shinnecock Indians? Yeah, I'd like to answer that if I may. Yes. Um, <clears throat> early on, when Africans uh, escaped to the north, uh, the Shinnecock Indians very often sheltered them on the reservation. And uh, of course, um, they felt comfortable there, and many of them intermarried with the Shinnecock Indians. Not only that, they shared in common their work on the whaling ships. And so there was that, uh, that link also. So, the Shinnecock Indians are very close to us, and every time we have an event, we're always, we always like to invite them to participate, and they usually do. They bring Indian food. Uh, one year, I don't recall the name, but the Youngblood uh, young dancers, dancers and drummers came and entertained uh, at one of the Harbor Fests. So it was, they're very, very close to us. And uh, their, their storyteller um, comes, Chi-Chi. Chi -Chi. Chichi to head. tell stories of the Shinnecock, and the kids are fascinated. They sit around the circle, and she tells them stories uh, it's my of the Shinnecock kids, mm -hmm. and they love it. So we, we feel a very close tie to the Shinnecocks mm -hmm. and to the Montauks. The pharaohs were Montauk Indians ah. uh, here on the East End, many of whom, as you may not know, were, 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 were wiped out. Mm -hmm. you know, well, I have read that. Yeah. Would you like to add to that, Wes? Uh, at this moment, no. I'm going to talk, though, if I, since you mentioned it. We do have <coughs> an annual fish fry. This is a project we use primarily to raise funds. And in an ex it is an experience of interaction with different people, and they all come. And I'm going to ask you to let you know now, in July of this year, all of you are welcome. And if you have any questions, <coughs> any thoughts at all, ask me. And I'll take care in whatever way may be done. It's a worthwhile experience, mm -hmm. and it's interesting. Please come. Mm 
I understand it's a great success. It's about 4,000 people every fish fry. Well, it's 400, <laughs> really. <laughs> 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 you can't get an extra zero on my end. Well, maybe this summer. Or when is it, actually? <laughs> it's the third Saturday or thereabouts <laughs> in July. Yes, yeah, sir. I will guarantee the weather being nice, so please come. <laughs> well, this is a nice segue into how we can uh, talk about how you people raise money for the projects, for the events and activities. Well, that's one, and there are donations that have drives, and, and incidentally, my uh, fundraiser is on my right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and we have had Pete Seeger, as Marion earlier said, you know, at the Wellers Church, mm -hmm. and we raise money there. So all in all, we are struggling. So we need your cooperation and your help. Sure. We've also written several grant. Uh, Kathy, with the help of a professional, has written several grant proposals to the federal government, the state government, mm -hmm. and of uh, the East Hampton um, Community Development mm -hmm. Corporation. The help of Kathy West. Kathy, Kathy Lester, Lester has yes. helped yes. you with And also Nina oh, Stewart. Yes. They've been helpful. very, very helpful. <coughs> and Fred Seal. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. And the, in fact, the state too. has granted us, we do have a grant now to proceed on our latest project. Which is? Which is the Sears Roebuck House. Tell us all about it. My project. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us well, about it. Well, the Sears it. House is, is a prefab. Well, it's not really prefab. It's a catalog. It's called a catalog house. Well, Sears Roebuck. Roebuck. In the, in the house, 20s, yes. in the 1920s, people used to be able to actually uh, look through the catalog, you know, pick out a house and send for it. You know, send the check, send me my house. <laughs> right. And they would send it, uh, not all assembled, but all of the parts of the house would be on a, on a number and on a truck bed. And then you'd have mm -hmm. a, a carpenter just come and put it together for you. Okay. Um, it was discovered that the house on Liberty and Route 114 <clears throat> was one of the earliest examples of that kind of house in right. Eastville. And we thought, well, why don't we try to preserve this house? It was falling apart. It had been abandoned for about 20 years. And uh, why don't we try to save it and maybe use it for a headquarters and as a, a mini museum for some of the artifacts we've been collecting over the years. And we found out that the county uh, had the house. Uh, it was um, um, belonged to the county because of back taxes. Uh, we talked to the mayor of Sag Harbor, Mayor Pierce Hans, and the board, and they agreed to purchase the house for the back taxes and to lease it to the Eastville Society. And that has finally happened, and we're very pleased about it. And we, we think in about three years, we will have a headquarters, and we will have a wonderful house for people to come and see. Uh, the furniture's all in it. it. It's as though the people just, just disappeared. Mm -hmm. you know, it, who, there's still ha there's still bedspreads on the beds, clothing in the closets, dishes on the table, dishes on, on the, the table, table. The piano is everything still is still there. Yes. It's in very very bad. And condition. we have a sign now in front of the house, the future site of the, of the Eastville, Eastville Community Historical Society. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited. You've really grown in the yeah. Yeah. Oh, we have. 1981. Yeah. Really really excited. Mm -hmm. yeah, so what um, what were you saying? Please send donations. Oh, please we send need donations. To our yes, so we must talk about the Saturday, February the fifteenth. Yes. Now, is this? Will this um, help? We hope. It's you a, with funds? Uh, we hope. We yes. hope it'll help. On, from twelve to three thirty on Saturday at Christ Church, we're going to be showing a tape of Sinke and the Anasid Revolts. Um, mm -hmm. Also, a Quentin Seneca will be coming from Mystic, Connecticut, because they're building a replica of the Anaset in Mystic, and he's going to show slides of how the work is progressing. And um, uh, this ship will be used for educational purposes, tours, <laughs> a museum where children can go and uh, see what happens to whalers and whaling, the whaling industry, as well as the... Uh, the kind of ship that it is. Right. I think it's called a school. A school. A school. A school. A Yes. But from 12 to 3.30 mm -hmm. on Saturday, February the 15th, we're going to have a gala occasion about Sinke and... Who well, John Quincy Adams... Adams uh, uh, who freed, freed him. Freed him. Right. He freed him. Yeah. He went to the Supreme Court of the United States. Right. Yeah, that's from that our legal did. department over there. Right. <laughs> uh, it's so rich in history, and there's so much that we don't know. <laughs> That, Can um, I add something? Yes. You know, there's a hidden agenda here that uh, I guess I'm paranoid about it because I'm a military uh, person and 
I was in a segregated army. And we, what was that one of the like? reasons, beg pardon? What was that like? <laughs> you don't want me to tell you about that, do you? That's another tale. That's another <laughs> tale, right. <laughs> two hours, not two minutes. Okay. okay, let me tell you just briefly. There's a uh, stamp coming out now during the Black History Month, a Black Heritage stamp, B.O. Davis Sr. Mm -hmm. His stamp is coming out. Mm -hmm. If you take a look at it. He, okay. the post the office. Right. he was a brigadier general, okay. the first brigadier general. First black. And uh, the first black. The first black the first brigadier, 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 brigadier general. general. They got many now since yes. that time. His anyway, son was also a general. I took my basic training at Fort Belvoir, Virginia. As an enlisted man, I applied for OCS, Officer Candidate School. Uh -huh. We were turned down, and at that time, Bill Davis. Senior had been appointed as Inspector General. We wrote him complaining that we had been turned down because we were we were colored those day, in those days. Right. Right? He got us in, and five of us entered the officer candidate school in uh, Fort Belvoir, Virginia. They gave a gave us a building by ourselves. Five of us had a building which would normally house two hundred candidates. And the other candidates didn't have anything to say to us. We didn't have anything to say to them. So finally we got out. Okay. <clears throat> and then we were sent to segregated outfits and so forth. And I stayed in the Army until 46. I was a captain. And I, was, I really was interested in becoming, remaining. I was offered a regular Army commission. Uh -huh. But because of the segregation, I didn't want it. Yeah. And if I'd stayed until 47, when Truman desegregated the army. I might be a general like Colin Powell today, all right? <laughs> anyway, maybe. It's all in the timing, isn't it? It's all a matter of timing. It's timing. But I loved the army because I was an engineer. Anyway, that's that's the story there. And uh, I don't know. I, can, I can't add anything to that. I get very emotional when I think about that. Right? Well, I do too. And in, in just thinking, you know, what that might be like. For me, and I've mm. never had to have that experience. Mm. And um, <clears throat> I, I have to say that it is an honor for me to be within this group today. Yeah. When I think about riding in the back of the bus and all that, it just it chokes me up, you know. I would like to yeah. say I'd like everyone to come by Sag Harbor to see our exhibit right. in the store mm. in the Seven Eleven complex. Oh, you have an okay. exhibit going on right now at we the Seven right Eleven. Yes, at the Seven. And the, what about the one in the library? And the, the one in the library floor. on St. Okay. Amy and the Sid. That will be on, yeah, on all month, as finish. also the one, the store in the uh, 7-Eleven complex. Okay. And how can the community help you thrive, besides sending money, Wes? <laughs> well, uh... They can attend some of the events. Oh, okay. yeah. Support their events. And, uh, and spread the word, you mm -hmm. know, and come and visit our little, our little museum. And come to our meetings the second Saturday, Saturday of every month at St. David, David A. &B. <clears throat> okay, Sign Church on East Pole Avenue. You're welcome to come at any time. We would love to have Look forward to that, and we will offer them coffee in Danish at our expense. <laughs> our so office. says Wes. <laughs> so <laughs> says Wes. What, what time? That does hasn't church happened yet, Wes. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. On, 10 10 10. on the second Saturday at every, 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock. And, and with that, we're going to wrap this up. Once again, thank all of you for coming. Um, and let's all celebrate Black History Month, not just African Americans. Thank you for having us. Thank Thanks you. for, for Thank being here with us on Insights, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.